Let's profile Apple Laptop Display's Wit Calibrite Profiler. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This display profiling guide will apply to many Apple displays, including the following. All iMac iMac Pro with Intel chip, 24-inch iMac M1, all Mac laptops with Intel chip, MacBook Pro 13-inch M1 and M2, MacBook Air M1 and M2, both 13 and 15 inch. All Apple external displays except the 27 inch 5K Studio Display and the Pro Display XDR. When Apple released new computers in the future, I'll also be updating the list of computers that are compatible with this guide in the, either the description or a pinned comment as well. So this guide can also apply to future Apple displays too. If you should own a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with Liquid Retina XDR or by extension a 27 inch 5K Studio Display or Pro Display XDR, the method of approaching, calibrating and profiling these displays are totally different and I'll leave a link to that separate guide in the description. To quickly determine which computer you have, simply go up to the Apple menu at the very top left. Click on About This Mac and an info dialog will pop up. It will tell you the Apple computer you have the ship that's inside your machine, and also the year that your machine was released. This year information is going to be important because we are going to have to match this information with the backlight type for our computer that we have. Now let's go back and talk about the compatible calibration devices. Because the method that we are going to do to profile these displays are fairly straightforward, any device from Calibrite or Xrite that is compatible with Calibrite Profiler will work for these methods. However, if you do have the Pro devices, for example, Display Pro, Display Plus, or the Display Pro HL, Display Plus HL, these are the Pro devices and will give you more control over the ICC profile that you are going to create. With this in mind, we are working with a computer operating system and there are settings that we need to turn off or change in order for us to get the best calibration result possible and to get a pass calibration. I'll leave a link to these guides in the description separating them by different macOS versions. I would highly recommend that you check out these guides before and then come back and then continue on with this particular profiling. If you have multiple display linked up to your system, verify that they are in extended mode and not in mirrored because if you're trying to profile displays that are in the mirror, it's not going to work. Chances are it's going to fail the profiling altogether. The other thing you have to remember is that for the display that you are going to profile, you want to leave it on and running for at least 15 to 30 minutes before you start to process. This way the backlight has the opportunity to properly warm up and stabilize for us to get the best result possible. Now what I'm going to do is show you a few things. So to determine if your computer or if your Apple computer is what Apple would consider to be a pro display or I would say a general consumer display, simply go into system settings. Now in here, you can go onto display and if you see something that says color profile, this is pretty much going to be the general consumer displays that we have and this guy will totally apply. If you see something that says preset, and then Apple Display XDR or anything like that at all, that means that those are considered pro displays and this guide will not really work for it. Now, regarding the profile that you have to set before calibration, you don't really need to do anything. You can just leave it the way how it is at default. There's really no problem at all. So what I'm simply gonna do is close out system setting and I am going to launch Calibrite Profiler. Now there's one setting that we need to change in Calibrite Profiler, and this is where it's going to be crucial. So I'm gonna share this information with you now. It is the backlight type for different type of Apple displays are out there. And there is a long list of them, as you can see. Now, you can try to match the display. This is where knowing the computer you have, the year that it was released is important because you have to match the backlight type accordingly. Simply enough for the laptop that I have, this is a 13 inch MacBook Air. And according to this guide, MacBook Air, what I would simply do is use white LED. So I am going to use just that right here, white LED. Now, if you're not sure, the easiest thing that you can do is just use white LED. But if you can really go in and pinpoint the one that you're going to use or the display that you have and match it with the backlight type, that's going to give you the best result possible. One more thing as well is that on this chart, you will see the two lines in red. That is the 14 and 60 inch MacBook Pro with Liquid Retina XDR and also the uh, Pro Display XDR and the 27 inch 5K Studio Display. The method for those are different and guides are in the description for those particular displays. 
All right, let's go back to Calibrite Profiler. For this demo, I'll be using my 13 inch MacBook Air M2 along with the Calibrite Display Plus HL. This is considered to be Calibrite Pro device in addition to the Display Pro, Display Plus, and Display Pro HL. So if you use any of these devices that I've just mentioned, the interface and everything will be very similar, including all the options. However, if you have other devices that are compatible with Calibrite Profiler, even though some of these options may not be available, this guide will still be valid and you can still use it to follow through. You can see that the Display Plus HL has been properly recognized by Calibrite Profiler. I will do a profile on my monitor and I will choose the Advanced Mode. Click on Next and this is where we would choose the Display Backlight Technology. For this particular laptop, I have to choose White LED, is already selected, so I am pretty much good to go. However, if you need to go and change this, simply click on the drop down list and you can choose all those different options. I want to point out that the Mini LED option is only available on the Display Pro HL and Display Plus HL. It will not be available on any other devices from Calibrite. And what I'm going to do is simply start with the preset photo. And up at the very top, this is pretty much our option for this photo workflow. This is a good starting point for us. So I'm going to click on D65 first. This it's going to be my white point that I'm going to use. If you want to use something else other than D65, you can simply choose the quick preset, for example, D50. Or if you want to dial something else in, you can click on custom and there are so many different options. You can dial in a temperature. You can choose another CIE value. You can use native. There are so many things you can do from this list. But for now, I'm going to choose D65. For luminance, the default is 120. However, I can click on custom and choose all these different luminance points. I can also do native or dial in my own value if I want to. The best thing that I'm going to do though for this particular profiling is that I'm going to choose 100 nits. And my recommended value for both photo and video as far as luminance for display go is anywhere between 80 to 120 nits. This is going to avoid the problem that many of us have where we edit everything that looks great on our display, we send our images to a lab, it comes back much darker than what we are seeing on our display. So in order for us to avoid those issues, a luminance value of 80 to 120 nits is going to be the perfect value that you want to choose. The other thing that you want to do is to really go in and fine tune this and figure out what is going to be best for you based on your own preferences. So one thing that you can do is you can go in and profile at 80, at 90, for instance, at 100 and 110 and see which one it's going to be best suited for you, but that would be my recommendation. For now, we're going to choose 100 and I will click on next. This is where we come in and choose contrast ratio. So I can do a lot of custom. I can do a custom black point. I can measure a black point, but for now, I'm going to choose native for this one. And when it comes to gamma, because I'm doing photo, I'm going to choose 2.2. However, you can also choose to do custom as well. For instance, sRGB, you can dial in a custom value or if you have the Display Plus or Display Plus HL, you can have this option for BT1886 for video workflow. However, this is only available on those two devices that I mentioned. But for now, we're going to choose 2.2. I'll click on Next and in this screen, all the options, I'm going to leave them at default value, which is going to be the best thing that you can do. And in the last screen, what we're going to do is choose the amount of patches. I'm going to do 118 for the sake of time and for this demo. However, when you do this on your own, I highly recommend choosing either 211 in advance or advanced plus at 461. In addition, in advance and advanced plus, you can also add your own image to the program as well, to which Calibrite Profiler will generate additional patches to run the measurement on. But for now, we'll choose 118 and I will click on next. This is pretty much ready to go. My device is recognized and is properly connected to the software. And you can see that in save preset is showing yellow right now because we have made some changes to this. Now, if you want to save this for long term profiling, when you want to come back again, simply click on save preset and I can just, for instance, name this. I'll say MacBook Air Luminance 100. D65, G2.2. So this is Gamma 2.2. And you can also type in the preset notes as well. For now, I'm going to save this out. You can see that it's showing in green now, meaning that the preset's there. And I'll click on Start Measurement. 
The only option that I have on this screen is brightness and I will simply click on continue. For now, what I'm gonna do is take this device and we're gonna put it into its proper position. You can see that on the screen is showing red right now because I don't have the cap open yet. So simply just pull the cap lightly, rotate it to the back. It's going to automatically detect the position. In the front of this device, there is a felt lining that prevents stray light from coming in. So you can really do a profiling in a fairly bright environment like I am in now. It's not gonna be a problem. And the last thing I wanna talk about is this counter weight you simply press on it and you can simply do a light tug on the wire to adjust that accordingly. So what I'm going to do now is lean this on the display and tilt the display back verifying that it is full in a circle and it is laying flat on the display. From there I'll click on next. So we are now at the brightness adjustment screen. There are two recommendations that I have. For instance if you have a newer Apple silicon laptop or an iMac I recommend starting from the darkness value and count how many times you have to come up in order for you to get the correct value. If you have, for instance, an Intel Apple laptop, I recommend starting at the highest luminance, like what we are now, and then counting how many times you have to go down. These are just quick tips that may help you in the process. For now, what I'm gonna do is dim the display down all the way and I'm gonna count how many times I have to go up on the brightness on my keyboard in order to bring this up so that it's showing the proper luminance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be seven for now. So at seven right now, I'm looking at 69. It's still a little bit too dark. I'm gonna do one more. This is gonna be eight. Now, interestingly enough, on this M2 MacBook Air, between seven and eight, I'm jumping between 70 nits and 133 nits right away. So this is a big problem because I really want this value to be at 100. So what I'm gonna do now is go at the seven time, which is going to land me at around 70 nits. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the option shift on my keyboard. And then I'm going to slowly bring up the luminance. And I'm gonna count how many times I have to do that because when you press the option shift key, it's going to start to do it in smaller increments. So I'm gonna do it around three times. One, two, three. Let's see where we are at right now. So one, two, three got me around 114. What happened if I do two? If I do two, it's around 97. That's going to be the closest value. So to conclude for my particular laptop, what I'm gonna do is bring the luminance down all the way, bring the screen down all the way. I'm gonna go up seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's gonna get me to around like 69 or so. It's still too dark. I'm going to hold the option and shift key and I'm going to bring the luminance up by two more. One, two. And this is going to land me at around 97 nits. So using this method, my particular number for this laptop is seven full taps plus two of those like smaller increments taps. So think of it as like 7.2. We're also going to put this in the profile name as well so that we know what we're really doing. So I'll mention that a little bit later on. What I'm going to do now is I will click on next and it's going to start the measurement process to measure all these color patches. And that's exactly what I want to do. Another thing I want to mention too, the reason why we are doing this is so that when we're really doing a color critical workflow, when we're really doing serious pro work, we can have our display showing us the proper luminance on this. I understand that this may be a laptop device and you may take this to, for instance, a coffee shop that has a, a sunlight coming in through the window and you have to bring the brightness up by the way and you're doing a collaboration thing. You're sharing your portfolio with your friends, your client, whatever that may be, and that's perfectly fine. That's where you would bring the brightness up by the way, but when you're in a more controlled environment and you're ready to do the edit, this is where that number that I just shown you will come in really handy. So you can use your display to do proofing every time and get really close to consistent result. All right, we're gonna have this run and I'll come back and share with us a few more things and then we're gonna wrap this up. And now that the measurement has finished, I am going to click on next and I'll pull the device slightly to the side. This is showing the colors that it's measuring, the actual colors. For now, what I'm gonna do is pretty much just give this a name. So I'll put in today's date. This way I know when I created this profile. And I'm also gonna put in an underscore C. So this is C is gonna be short for count in this one. And I'm gonna put seven underscore two because they, they won't take the um, point or the period in this one. So C seven underscore two, this is meaning this is for my particular computer from full darkness, I'm gonna come up seven 
on the very large carrot and then two on the minor one. Now, profile the reminder, I have mine set to none. However, by default, this is gonna show up at four weeks. It's always a good idea to come in and reprofile your display at the very most, like around like four weeks or so, but because I do this so much, I'm gonna choose none for now and not have it remind me. I'm gonna save this out. And what we can simply do on our display is do a before and after sample all these photos or we can even add our own images as well to the list but what i'm going to do and what i'm really most curious about is how this profile is or how accurate it is by doing a validation so i'm going to click on validation and with this i can choose the industry standard for example color sugar classic 24 patches i can also choose to use digital sg that has 96 but for now for time we're going to use 24 patches i'll click on next I'll simply slide the device back on the display because I never put the cover back on it. And I'll click on next again. Click on start measurement because if you don't, you just be staring at that white circle for this particular process. And once it's finished, we'll see what the Delta E is. And I'll share with you a few more things when it comes to profile on these displays. All right, that is finished. I will click on next and also I'll take the device down, putting the cover back on the lens. And what we're able to achieve here is an average on all the patches of 0.5, which is really great. For that one max patch we have, the value is 1.4. This entire laptop displays. The Delta E value is under two, and this is absolutely fantastic throughout. So you can save the report out if you want to, but for now, what I'm simply gonna do is I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this. All right, with that in mind, I will click on finish and a couple things I want to share with us is that normally what we would do is go into system settings under display and we can certainly choose to use the profile or select a profile that we want to use from this list, which you can easily do. But another thing that you can do as well, and this is something that I really like in Calibrite Profiler because there's now a profile manager that's in the utility sections of the program. And if you click on profile manager, you can see, for instance, I already gone in and profiled this display once. If I want to use that profile, I can just highlight it and click on activate and it will activate it. If I don't want to use that one anymore, I want to delete it, I can certainly click on delete to which it will ask me, do I want to remove that profile? So it's a great way to really not having to dig through the color sync profile folder to get access to your profile, to clean things up. This is one of the ways you can keep your profile nice and tidy on your system. For now, I'm gonna just leave it the way how it is and close this out. So yeah, that is the whole process for running a display calibration on any of the Apple laptop displays or iMac or external displays that I mentioned from the list at the beginning of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell renew and in our trust.